This is News 3 Now at 5. Thanks for staying with us. A cloudy with a chance of some thunderstorms for this evening. Let's get right to meteorologist Dana Fulton. She's watching the weather. Dana? We do have a few storms starting to pop up on our radar. Nothing quite at severe strength for us, but there is a severe thunderstorm watch in effect for most of southern Wisconsin this evening. Radar showing those storms just south of Platteville and Darlington as we look at this loop over the last 30 minutes. A lot of lightning, but the rain's passing through very quickly. Just north of Dodgeville right now, we're all also seeing some heavier showers, but it doesn't look like any lightning. Uh, snow thunderstorms north of Dodgeville and Iowa County. This is very different from the heavy rainfall that we saw yesterday. Some of those rainfall totals north of the Dells and near Portage uh, climbing well above our four or five inch mark, close to almost eight inches, just over seven inches around Camp Douglas, but near eight inches in Partyville. Again, there is still a severe thunderstorm watch in effect tonight for areas mainly southwest of Dane County. We we'll keep a close eye on our radar and we still have an alert day in the forecast for this evening because some of these storms could become strong to severe, bringing very heavy rainfall and high winds. We'll have a closer look at the weekend ahead. Spoiler alert, it looks very dry and sunny in just a few minutes. Right, Dana, we'll check back in a little while. As the way things stand right now, you have no real say over the Madison Police Department or how its officers handle themselves. Well, that could start to change tonight based on the way eight people vote. Jamie Perez live outside a place where a committee meets meeting is about to happen. Jamie, what are they taking up tonight? All right, well, these positions have been years in the making, and basically they would allow community members to oversee the police department. Now, even though this has been asked by for thousands and thousands of people, there's still no guarantee that it passes tonight. There's a big problem with trust in the police department. The lack of trust in police has been growing over the years, and city officials are feeling the pressure to do something. Thousands and thousands of emails we've received on this topic. Rebecca Kemble will be one of eight committee members voting tonight on whether to approve an independent police monitor position and a civilian oversight board. God forbid should another police killing of a resident happen, there would truly be independent eyes on that situation and, and we could have information that the public could actually trust. The oversight board would feature 13 members, nine of them nominated by community organizations, four appointed by the mayor and common council. By October, we would know who would oversee Madison PD and that board would hire the independent police monitor. That is a serious, serious issue for our community and that is what spurred um, the, the, the deep work that this community has done and invested in for the last five years. The committee isn't the last step. The full Common Council would still need to approve it Tuesday. Kemble said the wait for these roles is long overdue, but District 9 Alder Paul Skidmore, who has a vote tonight, is not in favor of it. Groups that are being solicited for recommendations, you know, have had, uh, have had issues with the police department and do not have favorable opinions of them. So in our opinion, my and I share this opinion, is that this group is being set up uh, to be biased against the police department. Kemble is still hopeful. She believes approval would place a clear distinction between watchdogs and those being watched. If this gets implemented, this will be the most robust community oversight of police that any city has in this country. And we will keep you updated on what happens with that vote tonight. But regardless of what happens tonight, the final vote rests in Common Council's hands next Tuesday. Well, all right, Jamie, thank you. Right now, a candlelight vigil is being held for Jacob Blake. This is a live look at the event. It's happening in Kenosha along with a vigil. There's a prayer service for Blake. You can watch the entire vigil on our website, channel3000.com. The Wisconsin Department of Justice Division of Criminal Investigation is releasing new details in their investigation into the Blake shooting. The DOJ identified Kenosha Kenosha police officers Vincent Arenas, Brittany Moronic, and Rustin Shesky that arrived to the scene. The DOJ says both Shesky and Arenas tried to use a taser to subdue Blake after initial attempts to arrest him failed. Blake walked to his vehicle when Officer Shesky held on to Blake's shirt and shot him seven times in the back. The DOJ says no other officer at the scene fired their weapon. Authorities have not said what Blake was arrested for. Court records show he did have an outstanding warrant that was issued in early July. All of the officers involved are on administrative leave while the investigation continues. DCI says they hope to have a final report within 30 days. Kenosha County Sheriff David Beth says he has not seen the cell phone video of Jacob Blake being shot by an officer. 
as the top law enforcement uh -huh. official in this county, when you see that cell phone video, which I didn't see the, the cell, cell phone, phone video of the shooting of Jacob Blake, okay, as the top law enforcement official in this county, do you see a problem just from that video of what that officer did? I think I answered. I did not see the video. You have never seen that cell phone video. I'm sticking to the same thing I answered earlier. Yes, What's I have not. Problem with that? That you haven't seen okay. the video. All right. Sure Thank you. Sure. For sure. During a news conference today, Beth reiterated that his office is not investigating the shooting. Instead, the Department of Justice is. Kenosha officials say more than a thousand Wisconsin Guard troops are in the city. That does not include additional troops that are coming from Michigan, Arizona, and Alabama. City of Kenosha's police chief says around 50 people have been arrested for various crimes, including breaking curfew, weapons charges, and drug charges. A judge has agreed to delay a decision on whether a 17-year-old from Illinois should be returned to Wisconsin, where he faces charges of fatally shooting two people protesters and wounding a third. The 19th Judicial Court judge said the decision has been delayed a month. Kyle Rittenhouse is charged with five felonies, including two counts of first-degree intentional homicide. The two men killed and a third wounded in Kenosha, all directly engaged with the accused 17-year-old gunman. Authorities have identified the two men killed as 38-year-old Joseph Rosenbaum and 26-year-old Anthony Huber. Friends describe Huber as an avid skateboarder and a Texas transplant with a young daughter. The injured man has been identified as 26-year-old Gage Grosskreutz. Kenosha police officers do not wear body cameras, but in Blake's case, there is the bystander cell phone video. Madison officers don't have body cameras either, and there's a committee of people looking into whether that should change. The body-worn camera review committee talking with community members about their concerns and examining research. We spoke to the co-chair of that committee, a UW-Madison law professor, about the pros and cons. One of the things that's very clear from the literature, though, from the research, is that if a community is going to engage to adopt a body-worn camera system, it needs to be a system that's very carefully regulated by specific policies that limit police discretion, so the police cannot turn on and off the cameras as they see fit, um, that provide mechanisms for protecting privacy, that may provide mechanisms to ensure that it's not used as a means of mass surveillance of unpopular or marginalized groups. He says cameras can provide a useful record of determining the facts of what happened in an incident, but overall research shows they do not fulfill any promise of reducing use of force by police and says cameras are a tool layered on top of an existing accountability structure. If that structure is inadequate, he says cameras can't change the process that much. The Wisconsin Senate will convene in a special session on Monday called by Governor Evers to address a package of police reform measures in the wake of the police shooting of Jacob Blake. The chamber will not debate anything immediately. Senate Majority Leader Scott Fitzgerald said today the legislature will work through dozens of proposals in the coming months. Lawmakers are required to at least begin special sessions called by the governor, but they are not required to take action. That would be great if, if they actually are going to meet. Uh, both houses should come and do that um, because, quite honestly, what, they've worked two days this year uh, and they're collecting a full salary, most than, more than what many people in Wisconsin actually collect. The legislature should be in, just like I went. The Madison community leader agrees. He wants to see the legislature actually do something. Michael Johnson met with Assembly Speaker Robin Voss yesterday. Madeline O'Neill followed up today, and she tells us how Johnson hopes to bridge the divide. Madeline? Well, Johnson says he feels good after his meeting with Voss. The two men disagreed on a few things, but are agreeing to keep the specifics of their discussion private at the moment. We reached out to Voss's office, haven't heard back for a statement, but earlier in the week he said he welcomed federal help following what he called uncontrollable riots in Kenosha. Johnson said today his main goal is to get young activists in front of people like Voss who can actually change policy. And yesterday, I pretty much said, I don't think you can have peace unless you seek justice. And I think one of the ways we'll be able to seek justice is by um, having the voices of young people who are organizing these protests that talk directly to policymakers.
Johnson says he is working to set up meetings with other representatives as well as the governor. He stresses that beyond outlining policy change, there needs to be funding for those changes both at the state and local levels. Madison, the Madison mayor's office has released a list of changes that they are working toward to address racial disparities and criminal justice reform. The county has similar efforts. We'll have more on those points tonight at 6. All right, Maddie, thank you. Thousands of protesters descended on the nation's capital on this, the 57th anniversary of the March on Washington. That march organized in part by the Reverend Al Sharpton after the police-involved death of George Floyd back in May. But Friday's demonstrators took on new significance after the police shooting of Jacob Blake. There are two systems of justice in the United States. There's a white system and there's a black system. The black system ain't doing so well. But we're going to stand up. Every black person in the United States is going to stand up. And there's more to come on News 3 Now. At 5 Up Next, Madison School District parents are holding an event demanding their children have in-person schooling this year. We'll have more on that. Coming up tonight at 6, a reality check on President Trump's speech during the final night of the Republican National Convention. That's it. And on Wall Street, the week ends with a 162-point climb for the Dow. The Nasdaq up more than 70. The S&P 500 finished today up 23. We'll be right back. Ashley Home Store's Labor Day Tempur-Pedic deals start now. Pay $28 per month interest-free for six years on Tempur-Pedic, plus $300 in free furniture and free guaranteed delivery within five days on in-stock beds. Only at Ashley Home Store. This is home. Don't miss great Labor Day savings during Blaine's Farm and Fleet's Labor Day celebration sale going on now. We have everything you need at amazing low prices throughout the store. Like, buy three tires from top brands like Cooper, get one free. Get $5 off a Farm and Fleet Platinum Automotive battery. Save over 60% on these men's Timberland Pro boots. Rewards members save an extra 10 bucks. And all men's, women's, and kids' sketchers are buy one, get one half off. Find value at Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Get the refrigerator you've always wanted now at the Brothers Main Big Big Deal Refrigerator Sale. Save big on the latest from GE. French doors, black stainless, and smart refrigerators, all with 0% financing up to 18 months. And you'll get our risk-free 30-day price satisfaction guarantee. We make it easy to be confident in your new refrigerator. It's the Big Big Deal Refrigerator Sale, with more selection, more savings, and more Big Big Confidence, only at The Brothers Main, your local store for more since 1938. Scranton is a long way from Wall Street. You won't find skyscrapers or big city bankers, just hardworking people. That's where Joe Biden's story starts. It's why he's running for president, for the backbone of this nation, working families. Donald Trump, he's in it for himself and his wealthy friends. In this crisis, we need to help workers and small businesses, and we need a president who will build back better. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Let's summer. Let's dine out by truly dining out. Let's serve up the freshest of food with a side of fresh air. And save a little money without sacrificing the savory. Let's raise our tongs to tasty by introducing our grills to new thrills and make mouths water more than a backyard slip and slide. Let's live a little more by having another s'more. Because summer is here, and no one does summer savings like festival foods. Ashley Home Store's Labor Day sale starts now. Beat the crowds to save up to 50% off special buys and doorbusters. Plus, get a bonus 5% holiday discount at checkout. And five-year interest-free affordability makes for low monthly payments. Online and in-store at Ashley Home Store. Tonight at 6, Madison residents stand in solidarity with the anniversary of the March on Washington. And in a news conference today, the Kenosha County Sheriff says he hasn't seen the video of the Jacob Blake shooting. We'll have that story at 6. Trust us to get it right. To keep you prepared. When severe weather is on the way. And your family's safety is on the line. Our team and technology are ready to help you stay safe. Trust the First Warn Weather Team on News 3 Now. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. Students from the University of Wisconsin are expected to lead their own march to downtown Madison tonight in solidarity with marchers in the nation's capital. Well, that's where we find Adam Duxter. He joins us now with the very latest. Adam. 
Yeah, Eric and Susan, this is a group led entirely by university students who are gathering here now at Camp Randall. It will continue to gather for the next 50 minutes or so before heading on a march to the state capitol. And again, they say they're doing this in solidarity with groups of marchers in the nation's capital today. We'll hear more from those students as well as those who are joining them here for this march tonight at 6 and then again tonight at 10 o'clock. All right, Adam Ducks are live on campus. Adam, thank you. More than 50 people in Wisconsin were hospitalized due to COVID-19 today. It's according to the latest data from the State Department of Health Services. State and county health officials recorded 768 new cases. A total of 74,081 have been confirmed throughout the state. 7,585, that's about 10.3% of all cases are still active. One more death has been confirmed, which puts the state's death toll at 1,118. COVID-19 testing in the state has dropped after three days of gradual increases. 9,156 conducted in the past 24 hours. The positive percentage of new tests went up by more than one percentage point to 9.2%. The seven-day average is at 8.4%. 62 students and staff on UW-Madison's campus have tested positive for COVID-19. That's up seven from yesterday. UW-Madison dashboard information says an additional 99 students and nine employees have tested positive through off-campus testing since July 28th. Right now, parents and families in Madison and Dane County are demanding that their children have in-person classes this fall. Our Talil Moladeen is live at the Line the Drive event along John Nolan Drive with the latest. Talil? This group of protesters is out here because they say they want to take education back into their own hands, adding it's the reason they sent their kids to private school in the first place, taking issue with the county's executive order that moved schooling online for students third grade and older. Parents say the county should also take into account the emotional, social, and mental well-being of students. I know for my daughter who did her first day of online this past Wednesday, uh, she was crying because she did start this year in person. And, he, and the first day of online came back around and it was just frustrating for her that she couldn't be back in the classroom. That's part of the health equation that needs to be considered too. They say they're tired of the government telling them how to run their family and that the risk of their children getting COVID does not outweigh the benefits of an in-person education. They also say school openings should be handled on a case-by-case -case basis and that they don't believe public health actually has the authority to make those decisions, um, especially when it comes to private schools. Talil, thank you. People in the Gulf Coast are dealing with the devastation from Hurricane Laura and facing major challenges ahead. At least 10 people were killed, including a 14-year-old girl. One of the strongest storms to ever hit the U.S., Laura slammed ashore Thursday near Lake Charles, packing 150 mile per hour winds and sending storm surge 10 feet high over homes and businesses. Hundreds of thousands of people are without power or running water. We want you to be prepared to be without power for not days, but I would suggest that you be prepared for weeks. Officials say the total extent of the damage may not be known for days because many roads are still not passable. All right, well, let's see what's in store for us, not only for the weekend, but also for the rest of today, because there's some weather out there, Dana. We do have a little bit of storm activity popping up on the radar right now. As we look at Platteville, you can see some showers off to the southwest, but thankfully getting a little bit of sun back in the area. In downtown Madison, a few ominous clouds building in, but right now we don't have any rain falling uh, in downtown Madison. For much of Dane County, we're looking dry. The showers seem to really be trending southwest of us as we look towards Iowa. We've had a few severe thunderstorm warnings get triggered on this stretch from Des Moines up to Dubuque. Heavy rainfall and some very strong wind gusts passing through. Uh, those warnings have now been expired. We're looking at some heavy rain just south of Lafayette County. This little cell passed south of Platteville and Darlington in the last uh, about 30, 40 minutes. So these rain showers moving through very quickly. That's some good news because that's going to pull back on the flooding potential with these storms passing through. Right now, there's also a little bit of rain just south of Baraboo. That's going to continue to travel east, southeast, getting closer to Lodi at about 540. So that storm passing through uh, much of Sauk County over the next few hours or next few minutes. But right now, most of the area is staying dry. That's some good news. We do still have a severe thunderstorm watch in effect, though, until 9 o'clock. Those storm chances could develop over the next several hours along a cold front right now that's still to the northwest. So it's still very 
very warm and humid outside. We have that warm air in front of our cold front, but behind it, cooler air is going to rush in and that's going to give us a really pleasant day for Saturday and Sunday. We're going to have cooler temperatures and some sunshine for the weekend. These storm chances, you can see the line developing closer to about 7, 730, really passing into Dane County, moving over Madison closer to 8 and then continuing southeast. It'll be a little windy overnight with that breeze changing behind the front coming from the northwest. Temperatures dropping through the 60s into the 50s for overnight lows for some areas north of Dane County, but much of the Dane County area and south will be staying in the low 60s for overnight lows. Saturday and Sunday, we're back to the sunshine. No rain chances developing for us this weekend and temperatures in the afternoon will be quite a bit cooler. We'll be in the mid 70s for afternoon highs. Precipitation totals from that line passing through. We had a lot of rain come through yesterday because these storms are going to move through so quickly. It doesn't seem likely rainfall totals will climb higher than maybe just a, a tenth of an inch for much of the area. Again, south of Platteville right now, that's where we're seeing some heavier storms quickly pass through. We could see totals closer to a half of an inch, but the flooding issues we dealt with yesterday were due to the rain very, very moving slowly and stalling over some of the area. And that's just not going to be a concern with this line coming through later this evening. We're going to leave the alert day in the forecast for this evening, though, because some of these storms could bring quick, heavy rain or the chance for some very high winds to pass through. Should be a pretty good day on the water tomorrow. Lake temperatures in the mid to upper 70s. We'll have mostly sunny skies for Saturday. Highs again close to 76 and then for Sunday near 75, mostly sunny and just very pleasant outside. Looking ahead to next week, temperatures will be trending in the mid 70s for afternoon highs. Overnight lows will be in the 50s. There'll be a slight chance for showers and thunderstorms for Tuesday and Wednesday. That'll linger into early Thursday, but by next weekend, temperature trends consistent in the mid 70s. As far as the roads are concerned right now, Again, any areas that might have some water on the roadways, you certainly do not want to drive through any standing water or try to walk through any standing water right now. Much of the interstate in the Beltline looks just fine. We're going to continue to keep an eye on the radar, though, because as the heavier rain does come through, things tend to slow down a little bit. Downtown Madison looks smooth, and the interstate passing through Rock County should be a smooth drive this week, evening. From Janesville to the Beltline, about 25 minutes. Sauk City to Milton, close to 16 minutes, and some Prairie to downtown, about 9 minutes this evening. That's a quick look at traffic. All right, Dana, thank you. And ahead on News Now at 5, talks to restart. The Big Ten football season are continuing to circulate. The latest potential plan just ahead at 5. News 3 Now First Warn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. It's time to breathe easier with a professional air duct deep cleaning from Stanley Steamer. We remove the dirt hidden deep inside your ducts, helping you get back to a cleaner and healthier home. Call 1-800-STEAMER today. Stanley Steamer gets your home cleaner. Fry Construction is celebrating their 25-year anniversary, which means big savings on home repairs and improvements. No job is too small or too big, and your safety is always our concern. Respected in the industry and voted best of Madison, Fry Construction delivers lasting quality for your home. And now, for a limited time, save 25% off gutters or insulation with a full roof, siding, or window project, all with zero down. Zero percent interest for 12 months. Contact Fry Construction today. Update your home and get 11% off Sheldwin Windows from Menards. Check out our great selection of over 140 in-stock sizes and styles of single-hung, double-hung, sliding, and casement windows. All 11% off. Update your floors with Mohawk. Choose from waterproof vinyl plank, durable laminate, or easy-to-install sheet vinyl. Get 11% off all Mohawk flooring. Save with 11% off everything at Menards. Save big Three days only. It's the end of summer sale at Grand Appliance. Get the area's lowest appliance prices, plus up to $600 in extra savings on top appliance brands exclusively at Grand. Shop in-store or online at grandappliance.com August 27th through the 29th for great deals like $1,150 off this mega-capacity LG washer-dryer pair featuring turbo wash and steam cleaning. Grand Appliance and TV, trusted since 1930. What happens now? Now that the rent's due, but they've cut your pay. Now that the virus has cost lives, but your health care costs too much. Now that our president has had months, but he still doesn't have a plan. What happens now? 
Joe Biden knows how to lead through a crisis because he's done it before. When our economy was on the verge of collapse, Joe Biden led the largest economic stimulus in a generation and saved millions of jobs. Now Joe Biden is ready to lead us through this crisis. He knows rebuilding our economy starts with fighting the virus, increasing testing, getting more protective gear for healthcare workers, and calling for mass mandates nationwide. As president, he'll get working families back on their feet by lowering healthcare costs and helping small businesses recover. So what happens now? We elect a president who will build back better. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. At Stanley Steamer, we love homes. It's why we started cleaning them over 70 years ago and why we still continue today. Whatever home means to you, we're ready when you are to make sure your space is clean and that you and the ones you care about most are safe. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. The NBA playoffs will resume tomorrow after the league and the Players Association detailed the commitments that made players comfortable continuing the postseason. In a joint statement released today, the sides say they will immediately establish a social justice coalition made up of players, coaches, and owners that would focus on issues like voting access and advocating for meaningful police and criminal justice reform. Play stopped Wednesday when the Bucks didn't take the court for their playoff game against Orlando, showing their frustration with the police shooting of Jacob, Jacob Blake in Kenosha and acts of racial injustice. Game 5 tip-off tomorrow was just set for 2.30 local time. Utah Jazz basketball player Donovan Mitchell is giving back to Jacob Blake's family. My new shoe had been scheduled to drop this week, but in light of all the senseless and tragic events in the shooting of Jacob Blake, I reached out to Adidas to see how we together could partner up and help support any way possible. For the first $45,000 in sales, that will be matched by Adidas to ensure an investment of $90,000 to help secure the future education of Jacob Blake's kids. Well, there you heard it. Mitchell said that in a Twitter post. First 45 hours of his shoe sales, he'll donate those proceeds to the education of Jacob Blake's three children. Multiple reports this morning indicate the Big Ten may try to go on with its football season. As originally planned, Fox Sports tweeted that Big Ten coaches met to discuss the possibility of reversing their earlier decision to cancel the season. CBS Sports reporter Dennis Dodd tweeted that the tentative schedule could potentially start Thanksgiving week. Another version of the plan would start the season in January, so stay tuned. And we'll have a final check of your first worn weekend forecast. Just a moment. Ashley Home Store's Labor Day sale starts now. Beat the crowds to save up to 50% off special buys and doorbusters. Plus, get a bonus 5% holiday discount at checkout. And five-year interest-free affordability makes for low monthly payments. Online and in-store at Ashley Home Store. Motorcycle riders love the open road, and GEICO loves helping riders get to where they're going. So to help even more, GEICO is giving new and current customers a 15% credit on their motorcycle policies with the GEICO Give Back. And because we're committed for the long haul, the credit lasts your whole policy term. The GEICO Give Back, helping riders focus on the road ahead. Wow, is that really me? <laughs> Here, I don't look 61 in three weeks. Um, I have no wrinkles, no bags, and this is only because of Plexiderm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. Who am I? I'm just in love with the mirror right now. Plexiderm is a wonderful product. I look at least 10 years younger. <laughs> it's a facelift in a jar. The people you're watching have just seen themselves in the mirror for the first time since we applied Plexiderm to their problem areas. Their reactions are real, and so are the results from using Plexiderm. What's even more amazing is that it takes less than 10 minutes. Now you can watch your under eye bags, wrinkles, and crow's feet visibly disappear for just $14.95 by going to PlexidermTrial.com and taking the Plexiderm 10-Minute Challenge. I'm Neela. I'm 
61 years old. I'm a professional personal trainer. It's so important to be in good health and to be fit and take care of yourself. How it makes you feel inside is amazing. And yet, when you look in the mirror, what you see necessarily isn't what you feel inside. Plexiderm, seriously, it fixes all that. It makes you feel as good outside as you do inside. Honest to God, it's amazing. There's nothing there. Like, the bags are gone. This is really good. This is, um, I'm gonna fill my bathtub with this stuff and get the whole body this time. <laughs> All these lines are gone. I feel like a new woman. The instant results are from naturally based silicates found in shale clay. Once applied, your skin tightens and firms, rapidly reducing the appearance of under eye bags, wrinkles, and crow's feet. At our $14.95 price, it's the best time to try Plexiderm and see it work for yourself. So if under eye bags make you look tired and older, take the Plexiderm 10 minute challenge today for only $14.95. Just go to PlexidermTrial.com or call the number on your screen. Ashley Home Store's Labor Day mattress sale is on now. We guarantee the best deal in Wisconsin. Savings up to 60% off, plus reward card bonuses up to an extra $300 back, and free delivery within five days on in-stock beds. Only at Ashley Home Store. Coming up on the CBS Evening News, we go on the road to meet a couple with a special love song that helped guide them through all of life's ups and downs. That and more tonight on the CBS Evening News. And Dane is watching the radar as we head for the weekend. The good news, Grant County has been pulled out of that severe thunderstorm launch right now. So we're just looking at the central portion of southern Wisconsin. Sunny skies for Saturday and Sunday, a little cooler. We'll be in the mid-70s for afternoon highs. Another chance for showers and thunderstorms on Monday with a slight chance on Tuesday and Wednesday. And a chance early in the day on Thursday. But notice that temperature trend. We stay in the mid-70s for our afternoon highs. And overnight lows will stay in the 50s as we look towards the beginning of September. September. All right, Dana, thank you. Thanks for joining us. We're back in 30 minutes with News 3 Now at 6. Stay tuned now for the CBS Evening News with Nora O'Donnell.